Good morning, everybody, or good afternoon, depending upon where you are in the world, and welcome to this webinar on market sentiment. Uh, my name is Martin Essex, and as you can see, I'm an analyst and editor here at Daily FX. Um, if you're new to these webinars, I've worked as a, an economist, as a financial journalist, and I'm a trained technical analyst. And as you'd expect from that, I, tra I trade by mixing fundamentals with technicals, with sentiment indicators, and global politics. I should start by saying that uh, these are my personal views, not necessarily the views of Daily FX or indeed of our parent company, which is IG. Right, before we start, as you know, I have to show you a hypothetical trading disclaimer. So this is it, if you wouldn't mind spending a few moments just reading that. And if you have any questions, please feel free to um, ask them and I will try and answer them towards the end of this broadcast, which will take, I guess, about half an hour. Right. So what's going on? Well, I think the main factor at the moment is quite simply dollar strength. So I'm going to talk you through, as I usually do, some of these charts and um, I'm going to start with the US dollar basket because this really is the story of the week so far. This extraordinary strength in the US dollar. Now this is the US dollar basket. So this is the dollar against a basket of its major trading currencies. And as you can see from here, over these last few sessions, there's been this extraordinary climb higher. So from the end of January, which is there, um, it's gone up for all these sessions continuously, a little bit off today. But as you can see, again, it's a very small decrease compared with um, what's been going on. So sentiment towards the US dollar, extremely positive at the moment. Um, right back, um, I suspect now that we're heading in the direction of these highs that we saw back in the middle of December, um, as long as this continues. Now, Clearly a trend is a trend, so it looks very much as though it's continuing to go higher. But as we can see what's happened today, um, you can expect a few bumps on the way. This is clearly a little bit of a reaction today. Um, the dollars come off, but nonetheless, its strength persists. Now, the biggest currency in this basket, of course, is the euro. So let's have a look at euro dollar, which, um, again, as I'm sure you all know, is the, the major world traded currency. Um, a major, a major traded pair, I should say. Now, here you see exactly the same picture in reverse. You can see that since the end of January, the, the euro has been heading downwards against the dollar um, before a little blip higher today. And this looks to me like it's um, at a fairly critical level at the moment. Um, these are the, um, let me just make the figures here. This was the low we saw back in the middle of November. Um, the low point was around 112 and a bit, 112.13, let's say, and we're now at 112.81. So it's not a huge increase, but very roughly um, three quarters of a cent. Um, so we've seen this quite substantial fall in the euro dollar, nearing this critical support level. Um, you would expect that support level to hold um, if there is a further fall in euro dollar, but who knows, maybe it will challenge it a bit later on after it's um, after it's reached that level. Now, the key question is what's going on, obviously. So um, there are two factors, and um, if you follow the markets, you'll know exactly what they are. Um, first of all, the, um, the prospect of a US government shutdown, another US government shutdown. Um, so um, con congressional negotiators, American congressional negotiators yesterday reached a tentative deal to avert another partial government shutdown on Saturday, this coming Saturday. But it does not contain the $5.7 billion that President Donald Trump wants for a border wall. So, okay, there are tentative signs of a deal to avoid a government shutdown, but they really are tentative at the moment. Congress is still not giving Donald Trump what he wants. But there is some optimism anyway, optimism that a shutdown will be avoided and um, that's helping to boost the dollar and weaken the euro dollar, which we're looking at on this chart here. Now, the second big factor, of course, is the US-China trade talks. Um, uh, 
US trade representative, whose name I can't pronounce, Robert Leitziger, or something like that. Um, he um, arrived in the Chinese capital, Beijing, today. Um, there's going to be high-level trade talks um, scheduled all this week. Um, and of course, they want to deal ahead of the March the 1st deadline. So trade talks between the US and China seemingly progressing. US government shutdown possibly being avoided. And that's really the big boost for the dollar at the moment, which is sentiment towards the dollar is really very positive. And everything else really stems from that. Um, the government shutdown has not yet been avoided, but a budget deal looks more possible. Um, US-China trade talks still seem to be progressing, um, but of course you need to be cautious about that. Anyway, the dollar has hit very roughly a three-month high in response, and the euro roughly a two-and-a-half-month low um, at key support. Um, that's really what's driving the markets at the moment. And I'll show you how positive sentiment is by moving on to the stock markets. So um, we'll start off as usual with Wall Street. So this is the um, Dow Jones Industrial Average. And um, well, it's looking pretty firm at the moment, isn't it? Um, so again, we go right the way back to well, just after Christmas. And since then, it's been rising firmly. It does look to me as though there's a bit of a rounding top that's beginning to show here, but it could just be a little bit of consolidation before another move higher. So the the trade talks and the um, uh, a government shutdown essentially lifting stock markets although a little bit of caution looks to have crept in there um, let's look at the other big measure of uh, the US stock market which is the S&P 500 much broader index and you can see exactly the same position um, it's been rising it's now begun to level off and interestingly I think it's still well below these highs that we saw in do, 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 3rd of December. So um, it's a bit shy of that, and I would expect there to be quite some resistance before it breaks any higher than that, but it's not at the moment looking as though it will necessarily go through there. So that's um, the US stock market. Um, let's see if the positivity extends elsewhere. This is the FTSE 100, and this um, is the uh, uh, the index of international stocks. It's the index of London listed stocks, the ones that uh, do tend to trade internationally, like banks and um, uh, mining companies and so forth. And so here we see the same picture, a bit more... Um, a bit more wild, I suppose, but nonetheless, the same sort of trend going higher. And here you notice we are now right back up to these highs. In fact, we're a couple of days ago, we actually got beyond those highs. So we're now looking at levels last reached in, where's that big red bar, um, October. So we're really essentially back to the levels that we saw towards the beginning of October. Interesting there again to see whether it continues higher, but at the moment it is looking positive. Germany, um, not doing so well. As you can see, Germany has been really quite flat. It's hard to say why that is, but um, it's not doing as well as some of the other stock markets. And France, the CAC 40, um, well, that's the same as Wall Street and the FTSE, big heading higher. Now, there was a story that I wrote about today, which I think is interesting, and that there's a bit of political uncertainty in Spain. Um, there's a um, a, uh, a vote coming up on the government's budget. To get that through, um, the Spanish government needs the support of the Catalan parties, but that's not necessarily going to be forthcoming because there's a trial of the Catalan separatists starting. So trial of Catalan separatists starting, Catalan's not necessarily going to support the minority Spanish government's budget. Um, that could conceivably lead to snap elections. And I think that's a potential negative for the euro. But also, if you look here at the Spanish stock market, it doesn't look to me as though that's as firm as some of the other stock markets. It's begun to head down. It's been heading down for a couple of weeks now. And I think that's probably 
as you know, the old cliche, markets don't like uncertainty, and there's certainly plenty of uncertainty in Spain. Right, let's go back to the currency markets. And um, one th actually, let's have a look at dollar yen, because I haven't mentioned that so far. Um, again, it's the same story, sort of dollar strength all the way around. Um, but here you can see that um, the dollar's not really been holding up. It's, it's not really been gaining so much ground against the yen. The dollar and the yen are both safe haven currencies, so they do tend to move together. But I think it's quite interesting here that, um, okay, it's the dollar yen is at its highest since about six weeks ago, roughly. Yeah, so about here towards the end of December again. Um, you have seen the dollar creep higher against the yen, yen roughly six week lows, but not a very strong move higher. And I think that's because at the moment the dollar and the yen do tend to move together. Um, let's have a look at sterling while we're in currencies, looking at the major pair. So the major currencies, for those of you who are new to this, dollar, euro, yen, and then sterling. So this is, um, we're still looking at dollar yen. So there's the chart of sterling. Um, and that's looking particularly weak, I think. So we see this long drop down in um, sterling. Uh, this is a move that started, uh, downtrend started towards the end of January. So only about three weeks. Um, uh, What's going on, of course, in sterling is Brexit. Um, and we keep talking about, oh, another crucial week for Brexit. Um, I don't think this week looks as important as some previously. So um, Prime Minister Theresa May is going to talk to Parliament today. Um, and I've no doubt she'll say that they're gonna, they must hold their nerves over Brexit. They've got to force the European Union to accept changes to the divorce deal. That will pave the way for an orderly exit and so on. So nothing much new there. She'll, she'll repeat the mantra that she's been um, reciting for ages now, which is that you know we have to let the clock wind down. We have to um, make sure that the EU gives way and so on and so on. I'm, I'm definitely not convinced that they will give way. And I think that we are heading, I think the chances of a no deal Brexit are rising. Um, and that I think is essentially why sterling is falling as well, of course, as the, um, the strength of the dollar. So she's going to say that, um, they should hold their nerves. Uh, Michel Barnier, the EU's chief negotiator, is probably going to say, you know, we can't reopen the deal. And then the next date in the UK Parliament is February the 14th, so two days' time, in which um, Parliament will look at its options. I'd be very surprised if um, if there's anything that changes this week. As I say, I think the clock's been wound down and. Um, well, you know, talks are at a crucial stage and so on and so on and so on. So um, that's essentially why sterling is weakening. Um, and I haven't talked about commodities so far. So let's have a quick look at these. Right, let's go on to commodities and I'll start with um, oil. Well, this is a daily chart. These are all daily charts I've shown you so far. And this is pretty well, it's just flat, isn't it? Um, What's going on, I think, is that um, what's positive for the oil price is that OPEC seems to be leading the way for supply cuts. Clearly, um, OPEC and its friends, Russia and so on, will possibly agree a deal to, to um, ensure that supplies don't get out of hand. That's positive for oil. But on the other hand, um, there's a, a of course, there's an economic global slowdown, and that's bad for the price of oil. So I think that's why it's broadly speaking trending sideways at the moment. Um, this is, as I said, the US measure of crude oil, West Texas Intermediate or WTI, looking at Brent, which is the global benchmark, you see exactly the same picture, um, a completely flat price for the moment. Um, Let's have a look while we're here at gold and just excuse me while I have a cough for a moment. About that. So this is the gold price in a very, very strong upward trend. It's been trending higher for some time now. 
Well, I hope I can last this broadcast out because I'm beginning to uh, cough rather a lot. Anyway, so um, I suppose this has held up really well considering the dollar is so strong. So gold, well, just a marginally lower over the last couple of weeks, but still, I think, uh, looking pretty strong overall. So those are the, the major markets. Um, I think that's about all I can think of as being the main uh, highlights at the moment. So let's go and have a look at the calendar. So this is our home page. Of course, it's not, but it is in a moment. There we go. Um, so as you can see, our top story is about oil by my colleague, Justin McQueen, and uh, we're talking about gold as well. And then this is what I wrote earlier about the euro against the dollar. Um, but I came here to look at the calendar. So let's see what's going on. Well, today, I think, is pretty much the busiest day for um, on the calendar. It's not a busy week for sentiment indicators. So I look at... Um, uh, uh, I look at consumer sentiment, business sentiment, industrial sentiment, market sentiment, all these things. So um, uh, I, I tend to look at the indicators because I think that these indicators on sentiment, be they consumer sentiment or business sentiment or market sentiment, do tend to give us a, um, an idea of what's likely to happen as opposed to what's already happened. So that here in the UK, there was a big deal yesterday about the, the the British GDP figures, but they were for the last quarter of last year and indeed of December last year. So they're essentially backward looking. And so I like to look at these sentiment indicators, which are more forward looking. So let's start off, as I said, with today. Now, the first one that um, struck me as interesting was Australia. So here we see this is the, the National Australia Bank's measure of business conditions and business confidence. And um, you can see that these both rose. So seven in January, two in December, um, four in January and three in December. Um, as always these with these figures, the, the actual number doesn't matter very much. It's the, the, the change from previously and the um, uh, whether it beat or, or did not beat expectations. We didn't actually have expectation figures for these, so you can't judge that. But it does look as though business confidence in Australia is rising. Um, then um, today we got the small US small business optimism figure. Um, I think this came out much earlier than we'd expected. It's got it down on the calendar for 11 GMT, but I think it came out much earlier than that. And that was lower. So um, previously 104.4, expected at 103, actual 101.2. So small business optimism in America, really not very good at the moment. And then um, we've got the, the uh, coming up right at the end of the day, our time. We've got the Westpac, uh, another Australian bank's consumer confidence index, and these these are for February, so these are very up to date. So this is this is late in the day GMT, so it's Wednesday Australian time, and we've got these figures for consumer confidence that are due. Um, I think they could actually be quite interesting. Um, before we go any further, as I'm talking about Australia, let's have a look at what's happening to the Australian dollar, um, and uh, I hope. Hopefully I've got this here somewhere. Yeah, here it is. So um, if you look at the Australian dollar, you can see a bit of a weakening trend here. Um, I would again suggest that this is more about the US dollar than the Australian dollar. So here we see the Aussie falling, which is the strength of the US dollar, which Sit, does not sit particularly well with those figures that I was just talking about. So we've got really decent figures um, in Australia, not so good figures from America, which possibly shows us that the Australian dollar is, um, uh, the Australian economy is doing better than the American economy, let's put it that way. Um, still, the Australian dollar is 
most notably the currency that uh, people buy when they're optimistic. So it, it's a risk on currency. And when there's risk aversion, people tend to come out of the Australian dollar. And you can see that best if you look at the Australian dollar against the Japanese yen, which I think I've got here. Yes, I have. Um, so what you tend to see is uh, the Australian dollar is the risk on currency, the yen is the risk averse currency, and it's been relatively flat, I suppose, not too much change there, but just in those last few sessions, we have seen a bit of a fall in the Australian dollar against the Japanese yen, um, just as we saw the um, Australian dollar come down against the US dollar. Um, right, I interrupted myself. I'm talking about the calendar, aren't I? So as I said, today's the big day. Um, the, 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 other, the only other day that's got any interesting sentiment indicators is actually Friday, which you often get on Friday. Um, you get some figures coming out which tend to slip under the radar because it's you know, Friday and people are heading off for the weekend and so on. So they do often get missed. But what we have got is two indicators. First of all, at 1.30 our time, the Empire State Manufacturing Index. Nothing to do with Empire. Empire State is New York and its figures for February. We're expecting quite a strong increase, as you can see. I say we're expecting. What this is, is the, um, the news agencies like Bloomberg and Reuters, they poll analysts and they ask them for their expectations and you get a consensus figure. So you can see here the consensus figure is for a rise in the Empire State Manufacturing Index in February. Obviously, if that misses expectations, you might expect the dollar to fall. And then, so that's um, manufacturing. And then further down here, we've got the um, University of Michigan Sentiment Index. Now, this is a, a, tends to be an important figure. So the University of Michigan calculates consumer sentiment. It's one of two um, uh, sentiment indicators consumer sentiment indicators in America. The other one is the conference board's measure, but this one is the University of Michigan sentiment. These are February provisional figures, high impact figures. Previously 91.2, expected 93.9. Let's have a look. This is an important figure and well worth keeping an eye open for. And they give you, um, this is the headline index, but you've also got current conditions, expectations, and some inflation figures as well. So. That's all relatively interesting, potentially. Now, I couldn't go on to, I couldn't be talking about sentiment without looking at our retail sentiment indicators. I'll wait for the page to load. There we go. So um, down here in the middle of our home page, you can see these sentiment indicators. So what we do is we look at where retail traders are um, uh, positioned and we tend to take the opposite view. So um, this is on the basis that crowd sentiment is often wrong. So if retail traders are dashing into some currency, we think, well, you know, maybe maybe we should take a contrarian view on this. So as you can see with your dollar, um, longs are outnumbering shorts by 70% to 30%, so seven to three. So there's long positions in the euro against the dollar, and that sends out to us a bearish signal, which I think fits in with everything I've been saying before. The, the dollar looking strong, the euro looking a bit dodgy. And so there's a bearish sentiment figure two from the um, uh, retail trader sentiment data, which I think is interesting. Mixed on sterling, well, conceivably it's fallen far enough. Mixed on dollar yen, bearish signal on gold. Again, that fits in with this idea that the dollar is is the go-to currency at the moment. It's looking pretty strong. Bitcoin, well, I give up on Bitcoin. It's it's always seems to be a sell, but if you're in there, sorry. <laughs> and then finally, Wall Street stocks, a bullish signal, which again fits in, I think, with uh, with what we're seeing elsewhere. So that's the sentiment indicators. Um, let's have a look at um, let's have a look at what's going on with the um, fear and greed index. One that I watch at least once a week. I think it's interesting. It's not loading. So why isn't it loading? There it is now. Um, so 
CNN Business produces this fear and greed index. It looks at um, seven indicators of investor sentiment. It combines them all into this one index. Rather stupid name, I think, but never mind. Um, what it means is that here, where it, where it says extreme fear, that there's a lot of risk aversion, that people are going into safe haven assets. Up here in the green, up to 100, it means that people are willing to uh, uh, buy some riskier assets. They call it extreme greed. I would call it risk on, but there you go. Um, we're now at 62, so in positive territory. And that seems about right, doesn't it? it, it previous close 61, a week ago, 64 stable in positive territory. Markets a bit more optimistic than pessimistic, but nothing enormous, nothing to, to really, um, uh, nothing to really say that the markets are very strong at the moment or very weak at the moment, but they are broadly positive. Now, I said I would answer some questions. Um, and let's have a look, my goodness, sorry, lots of them. Um, right, interesting juncture for dollar yen. Let's have a look again at dollar yen. Yeah, I suppose so. Um, I haven't really drawn too many technical indicators on this. Let's have a look at the trend lines. So if I move that trend line up to there, you can see that we're, we're quite a long way from support. Uh, we are though quite close to resistance, aren't we? So I should have drawn this on before I came. Arguably, um, yeah, arguably we've actually no, we do well, just about looks as though it might be breaking to the upside from that trend. Um, it's it's certainly away from that support line that I drew earlier that's close to the resistance line, perhaps just edging ahead. It's already above the 20-day and 50-day moving averages. Um, so we're, the next obvious level would be the 100-day moving average at uh, 111.34. Um, um, so that would be an obvious next step. And if we break through that, then I would have thought we were looking back at these highs that we saw um, in, let's have a look at this one here, where we are 14th of December, um, where it was up to about 113 and a half. I think it would take a lot to push it up that far, but uh, it certainly does look broadly positive to me. Um, Right, Kieran. Mileage in thinking if US stocks and indices rising bodes well for oil or completely this happy thing. Yeah, um, I don't think there's a direct link between stocks and oil. Now, oil is heavily weighted in the FTSE 100, so the FTSE 100 does tend to benefit from higher oil prices. We've got BP and Shell and so on in there, but I wouldn't say that they were directly related. Um, I certainly wouldn't say that if stocks are up, oil is, uh, are therefore oil is up. I, I, they both move with, um, uh, they're both affected clearly by the global economy. If risk is on, then um, um, uh, stocks go up. If the economy is strong, um, oil goes up. But I think that they are different. I don't think they move together in that sort of way. Right, Roger, how come Australian business sentiment is up when China's economy is slowing down? Well, yeah, now that's a really good question. Um, let's have a look at um, the, the Aussie again. And um, maybe, maybe what's the case is that um, we, we, know economy, we know China's economy is slowing down. I mean, there's nothing new about that. Um, so therefore, perhaps it's all in the price. I mean, maybe we, the, the, the markets are all, have already got used to the idea that China's economy is slowing. Um, and Australian businesses are saying, OK, well, you know, we know that there's a slowdown in growth, but, uh, you know, we, we're still going to sell our goods to Australia and um, therefore it's nothing too bad for us. Um, yeah, the Australian dollar does tend to move, or it tends to be a barometer of what's going on in China, but nothing new has come out of China. And, I, and again, this goes back again to this idea that perhaps uh, the Americans and the um, the Chinese will manage a trade deal. So I think that's, that's all in the price. Right, I think I've run out of time. Um, I'll just show you again, going back to our home page. there's lots of educational material here. Um, do have a look at it. Um, if uh, 
especially if you're new to this business, there's lots of lessons in there for uh, um, for traders, uh, whether you're new, whether you're not new. Um, I would be very cautious about delving into the markets unless you know what you're doing. So um, do have a look at this uh, material, It'll give you lots of ideas, beginner, intermediate and advanced and indeed expert. Um, well worth reading, especially if you're new to this, um, because it's difficult. Anyway, that's it from me. Um, I hope you found this useful. Um, hopefully, I'll be back uh, next week. And uh, in the meantime, um, have a good trading week.